Hello, welcome back to the Poker Channel for the last time in 2023. Today we're going to cover the last session I played of the year at another local LA casino that you might have heard of. More importantly, however, we're going to go over my end of the year results as I do every year. I think this is the second or third year in a row. First and foremost, let's head into the cards, see how that goes, and then reconvene here at this random Montebello construction area to talk about how things went for myself. Let's go to the casino. All right, guys, here we are once again at Commerce Casino, this time in front of some fancy fountain. I'm heading in there to play some 510, potentially 1020 if they have that game. That's assuming I don't get hit by a car on the way in there. Before we head in there, by the way, and this is the last session of the year, I wanted to announce a holiday meetup game virtually on Club GG that I'll be hosting this upcoming week. It's gonna be on Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific. So if you guys are interested in playing one, two, two, three, or two, five online, this is the time and place to do it. Signing up is pretty straightforward. Just hit that link down there at the bottom. It takes like five minutes or less. So yeah, if you guys wanna play with me digitally, and uh, get some of these Mariano dollars that I've acquired over the last 12 months, I will probably be Santa Claus on there. Anyway, that's all I got for now. Let's head inside and gamble. That's a nice car, by the way. That That is a beautiful car. I'm sorry I'm in your way. I think that's the uh, Marina Blue BMW. Oof. That's a nice car. I'm still in his way. This has been one of the most awkward intros ever on this channel. Let's go play poker. guys here we are underway at commerce casino today the game is 510 no limit max buy-in is 1500 so that is what i'm in for in this first interesting hand there are two limpers before the button makes it 70 dollars and i look down at king 10 offsuit in the small blind not the best hand of course but considering that the raise came from the button over two limpers i think she could be trying to steal this pot with not the best hand ever so i decide to attack that perceived weakness with a raise to 280 dollars interesting developments here as the first limper folds but the second limper calls the 280 and then the button who made it 70 originally she gets out of the way so not exactly what I was anticipating, but that's fine. As we go to a flop of 882 rainbow, really dry flop. I should still have all the strong hands, whereas my opponent is probably not super strong and is going to miss this board more often than not. So I decide to continue for a small size, 160. And this hand gets even weirder as now he raises to $450. Not really sure what's up with that, but I think he might be trying to pounce on my small sizing on this flop by raising whatever junk he's got. The problem is we lose to even some of that junk, like let's say small pocket pairs or ace highs, even better king highs, like a king queen offsuit, for example. So instead of calling and trying to outmaneuver later on or folding, which I think is reasonable, I instead decide to jam all in trying to look like I've got aces or kings, maybe queens. And it seems my opponent might actually think I do because he ends up, after a few seconds, letting it go. So right off the bat, we're off to a strange start with this hand, but happy to take it down. In the next one, early position opens to $65, and I look down at ace-jack suited in the big blind. Being up against such a big open size of 65, the big blind's only 10, so that's quite a large raise. I decide to just call, which even if he didn't raise that big, I think is okay once in a while with ace jack suited in the big blind. So we go heads up to a flop of queen 3-3 three, three with one heart out there. Another pretty dry board. I check and my opponent bets $50. I've got a strong ace high as well as some backdoor straight and flush 
possibilities. Could always hit an ace as well. So I make the call and we see the queen of clubs on the turn. I check it again and this time my opponent checks it back. So we've got ace high, a pretty strong hand at showdown. So when the river comes the nine of spades, I think the best play is to check and see what he wants to do. A hand is strong enough to win and I don't think it's necessarily weak enough that we have to bluff. But for whatever reason, I decide to try to steal this pot in hopes of trying to get my opponent off a chop if he's got an ace high type of hand as well. And could also take it down against medium pocket pairs that don't feel comfortable against a river bet. So I do decide to bet. Since we are essentially representing a very strong hand or nothing at all, I think a big size is the best way to go. So I make it $350, 1.5 times the size of the pot. And I instantly regret my decision as my opponent now raises to a thousand. Seems like we ran into a strong hand here. So of course I fold right away. Didn't have to lose that river bet. Let's see if we can make up for it in this next hand where there's another limper and the middle position makes it 75. I'm on the button with eight, six suited. Could go all three ways here actually. Folding seems a little tight, but probably okay with a hand like this. Raising also seems to have some merit as we could potentially get heads up and represent some strong boards out there. And of course, just calling can't be that bad since we've got a playable hand in position. I decide to go with the raise option. I make it 200 bucks. The limper folds, but now when it gets back to middle position, he decides 200 is not enough and makes it $560. So it's 360 for me to call. And with a hand like this, this should just be folded right away, mainly because even though we do have position and some playability, it's just not that strong of a hand. And even if it were, we're not deep enough to really justify putting more chips in. That being said, I do decide to make the call, trying to make some hands happen here, maybe for the vlog, maybe just because I'm a little bit bored of not hitting any flops for a while. Either way, the money is in there and we go to a flop, which instantly rewards my poor pre-flop decision making. It comes 10, 9, 7, 1 spade. We flop a straight in a multi-raised pot, not something you say every day. Now my opponent bets $600, despite this board not being the best for him, or at least so I thought. But of course I'm not complaining because I've got it this time. I jam all in for 1300, it's all I have left at this point and it's pretty much just a min raise. And my opponent snap calls. Runout is not the best, seven of hearts, three of clubs. So it pairs the board and brings in a flush, but considering all the aggression that happened pre-flop, I think it's unlikely he's gonna have a full house or a flush. But it turns out I'm wrong because he's got ace six of hearts, which means we lose to the nut flush. <sighs> Seems fair, I guess. He had the best hand pre-flop, so I guess it makes sense. So yeah, either way, we are now stuck a decent amount of money. I reload for another 1500 and move on to this one where I've got pocket eights, raise it up to 30 and get called by the button and small blind. Flop comes down quite nice. It's ace, eight, deuce, rainbow. We've got middle set on an ace high board. Small blind checks, I of course should be betting, but I think occasionally checking, not too often, but just occasionally is a good idea. So that's what I do this time. Another reason I did this is the player on the button who made the call originally was someone who stabbed often when it checked to him. At least that's what I've noticed so far, but he doesn't take the bait this time, checks it back, and we see the three of diamonds on the turn. Small blind now leads out for $50. I wanna keep all the players in the hand, so I just call, and the button calls as well. Off to a river now, which is not my favorite by any means. It's the four of clubs, which makes it so that any five is now a straight. But considering how this hand has played out so far, I think it's unlikely either of my opponents would have a five unless it was like a flush draw on the turn that contained a five, but even at that, not super likely. So when the small blind checks this river, I think betting makes a lot of sense. However, it looks like the button is assembling a bet. So I decide to check it and let him fire away at it. Sure enough, he puts in $200. The small blind folds and now it's on me. What do we want to do versus this river bet? Just calling is okay, obviously, since you know we might be up against the straight, but I think going for some value is an option to contemplate at least. Mainly because, like I said, it's unlikely he's got a five, at least in my opinion, given how the hands played out. And of course he could also be value betting a much weaker hand since I've underrepresented the strength of my hand pretty much all the way. He could be betting two pair, maybe even a smaller set, um, just an ace I wouldn't even be surprised to see. So instead of just calling, I decide to check raise and go for maximum value, perhaps a bit thin, but I think I like the play. So I jam it all in there for $1,100, hoping to get a call, just not a snap call. 
Sadly, this time it is a snap call. He throws in one chip right away. That looks like bad news. And sure enough, my opponent's got 5-4 of diamonds for the turned nuts. That hand, I guess, does make sense for him to have a five with. And at this point, I feel like an idiot for raising on a one-liner with a set. But then again, if he had actually called with a worse hand, I would have felt like a genius. That's kind of the beauty of poker. You know, it humbles you sometimes. Other times, it lets your confidence get a little out of hand. That's not happening today. Let's see if we can turn it around in this next one where the button opens to $50 and I'm looking down at ace queen in the small blind. No brainer raise here, so I make it 200 and she makes the call. Off to a flop, which comes jack, five, four, two diamonds. Pretty connected board, so I think checking or betting a little bit bigger than normal are the ways to go here. This time I do put some chips in the pot, 240 bucks. My opponent makes the call and we see an interesting turn card. It's the jack of hearts. Most people I think would slow down here, but I think continuing to bet is actually the best play for a variety of reasons, mainly that a jack is a little bit better for me than for her. I also have removal to ace jack and queen jack, which are hands that we might be up against. And she's still gonna be holding a bunch of middle strength pairs like ace five suited any pocket pair between the five and pocket tens let's say and all these hands are just going to hate continuing to face aggression so i put in a bet of 325 and she doesn't think too long before making the call so we're looking for some good river cards to set up an all in on i think a diamond or a high card is what i'm looking for anything lesser than that i'll probably shut it down but it's the king of diamonds so having a diamond in my hand and of course a king being probably better for me are things that are going through my mind as i decide to go for it i jam all in for my remaining 900 dollars. i think it's gonna work but it doesn't she snap calls it looks like we're just running into strong hands today sure enough she's got pocket fours for the flop set turned full house that is not a hand that we can realistically expect our opponent to fold unfortunate situation once again we are losing a big pot here and have to reload for another 1500 but we get the best remedy for a session like this pocket aces in this one i open up the action before the button calls and then the small blind re-raises to 150 music to my ears of course with the pocket aces at this point my image is absolute garbage so i decide to jam all in for my freshly bought 1500 dollars buy-in the button folds and the small blind doesn't waste too much time before calling. Sometimes jamming all in makes it look weaker, you know what I mean? Like, whatever, I'm just going with it. Unfortunately for him, I've actually got it this time. I show right away, turn over the aces, and it turns out it was a cooler either way because he's got pocket kings. So out of nowhere, we went from running really bad to an absolute run good cooler in our favor. But there's five cards to come. Let's see if we can hold. Queen 10-5 on the flop. Nine on the turn, a little bit sketchy because now any jack would give my opponent a straight. And what do you know? Check out this river card. Oh, oh my God. Oh, Jesus. So yeah, today is not my day. Another 1500 down the drain. We reload one more time. Let's see if we can turn things around. At least for the vlog, I'd like to win at least one more interesting hand before ending today's session. In this next one, I did not start filming until the river. I was trying to get myself sorted between buying new chips and taking notes, etc. So I'll tell you guys the hand history real quick up until that point. There are three limpers and I am in the $20 blind raise. It's not a straddle because commerce doesn't allow straddles. I don't know what's up with that. Just add it to the long list of reasons why. But yeah, I'm in the $20 straddle, aka blind race, because I don't have an option. There's three limpers, and of course, I essentially check without having a choice. We go to a flop of ace, king, seven, two diamonds out there. That means I've got the jack high flush draw. Action checks around. Turn is the four of spades. Small blind bets 50. I call. The button calls, and we get there on the river. It's the 10 of diamonds. Small blind checks. I decide to get sneaky and check it, hoping the button value bet's a worse hand and I could spring the trap with a check raise or maybe open the door for him to bluff. The button does indeed do just that. He bets $80 and even better news is that the small blind now calls the $80. It's back on me and of course I am gonna be putting in the raise. I make it 400 bucks, gets back to the button and he jams for $700 more. <laughs> the small blind folds and at this point it's just getting comical it seems likely we're up against the queen high flush which is the only hand that beats me in this situation but at the same time our hand is just too strong to fold especially after i played it so passively he could just be bluffing with a hand that contains the queen of diamonds not too often but maybe sometimes so of course getting a good price and having a second nuts i am not going anywhere i make the call and it's another incorrect decision as he turns over queen eight 
of diamonds for the nuts. So we end up making the second nut flush on this board versus the nut flush. Not too surprising, what can I say? Based on how the night's been going, I guess I could have seen that one coming. That was the last, I don't know if I want to call it interesting. Let's just call it the last hand of this particular session. It was kind of a bloodbath, but either way, I hope you all enjoyed. Stay tuned for many more thoughts to come, as well as the end of the year results. Alright, so that did not go as planned. I ended up losing $8,000 in under three hours here at the Commerce. Of course, I'll be the first to say that I did not play well. I think we can all be honest about that. But of course, I ran pretty bad and got cooler a few times, so that didn't really help either. Maybe I'll run a little better this Thursday on Club GG. Reminder to jump on there if you want to partake. Maybe I'll continue giving away money on there. Only one way to find out. You guys got to join. But yeah, I think that's it for uh, this particular poker session. On that note, let's go over some annual results for myself. Despite tonight being a disaster, it was still a good year. Stay tuned for details. So as you guys saw, another typical session, I guess you could say. Don't want to complain too much about those results. But anyway, that concludes the year in terms of poker for myself. I'm happy to announce that things went rather well. Here are the three major numbers to look at. Number one is hours played. Secondly is the amount of sessions I played. I think it was exactly 750 hours and 103 sessions, if I remember my numbers correctly. And luckily, we were able to profit a grand total of $850,000 plus some change. Not bad whatsoever. When you consider that I started this channel like four years ago now, I think, playing some 1-3 and just trying to discover the game, we've come a long way. Of course, there's still plenty left to learn. I am by no means a master of the game, not even close, but it would be lying if I said I'm not extremely happy with the progress that has been made across the lifespan of this YouTube channel. So cheers to that. Thank you guys so much for all the continued support and uh, coming along on this journey with me. On that note, Merry Christmas or Happy Holidays, depending which country you're watching from. Or if you celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas. If you don't, Happy Holidays. Happy New Year to you all. And I will see you guys in 2024. Until then, good luck at your local tables and enjoy the holidays. Peace.